So there are some homestead jobs that I absolutely do not look forward to, and this is one of them. Come here, chicks. Come here. This is all the old lettuce from the garden that was just about to bolt on me. So I'm giving it to the chickens and hope that it distracts them because I'm in here today to harvest compost for mending um, all of my beds for the fall crops. It is a very dirty and hard job. Oh my gosh, no look! <laughs> look what I see. A little cucumber or pumpkin vine growing out there. If you're new to our channel, I do use my enclosed chicken run every year to build my own compost. Now, it's definitely not enough to do everything that I need for my garden, but it is always the perfect amount to do a proper fall amendment. There are lots of things that you're going to see in here, like feathers, you know, roots that haven't been composted down, sticks, walnut holes, um, even pieces of fabric that I never know where it comes from. They're digging it up. It didn't even ever belong to us. It's from previous owners or something. So Todd built me a compost sifter um, and that's what I'll be doing today. So come with me while we harvest compost. So this is the compost sifter that he built me. It's just wide enough that it fits over my wheelbarrow. Heavy um, steel grating. It's definitely not chicken wire. I don't know what that is. And then just a couple two by fours. So I'll show you guys how I use it. I just saw a funny one, that big old bone. So we just put it in here and uh, this is how I build my compost every year is I deep litter with the chickens over winter. Well, so every fall, let me back up, every fall, all the garden clean out gets thrown in here. Um, then they typically several times throughout the winter are given, given um, straw in here to keep them protected, just their feet from the snow. So when it snows real deep, they don't like to come out if they have to walk on that. So I give them straw. And then during the winter, they're, they have deep bedding going on in their coop. And in the spring, I clean that out. And as it wears down, so already this year, Rue, get out. Already this year, this has been top dressed, this coop with hay and straw for just cleanliness and especially when it rain, if it was to ever rain a lot, keep, keeps them from getting dirty eggs and stuff. So I'm just working this. He built it so I can um, like shake it, but I find just working it um, gets the fine compost particles through. Actually, this is all really, really broken down already. Nice, good compost. Let me show you real quick. You see? I don't want to block your light. They always say you can tell good compost when you see all those itsy bitsy little white things in there. That that's the mycorrhizal fungi and all those fancy words. So and it holds together when you pack it pretty good, but nice and crumbly too. So this is what I'm doing. I'm going to keep doing this until I get a wheelbarrow full at a time and then go dump it in the garden. And once I have at least a row done where I'm going to plant, I'll bring you guys back for that. Okay, after sifting that, I'll show you what's left. Oddly, it's always weird what shows up. So <laughs> there's like a pumpkin seed, a dangerous piece of glass, which I will put in my pocket. They dig up stuff from like ancient days, I think. 
ra a few rocks, some twigs, a few pine shavings that haven't been decomposed, fine roots, and then we'll just dump that back. And I'll show you what we're left with. Lots of beautiful, beautiful compost. So I'll probably have to do this three or four times and we'll have a full wheelbarrow. So I wish I would have timed it. It feels like, <laughs> that's as best as I can say, is it feels like one wheelbarrow load takes me 30 to 40 minutes. I'm just guessing because I didn't time myself. So here was the last batch of remnants. And I'll show you the full bowl. Whew. That's some beautiful looking compost. And if you can see back behind, let me move this a little bit. I mean, I barely took anything from here. So if I put my hand here, you know, maybe two digits deep. And some of you guys might be wondering how I know how much compost I make. And I actually use my baseboards around my fence. Um, as a judge for how much compost is it currently in here and harvestable because when we first moved here we actually had to block off those areas because the chickens could escape under the fence and as you can see over in this corner you, you can't even see the boards so I use that as a judge for how much um, good compost soil I can harvest and then when I need to back off so I guess keep a marker if you put in this kind of system. That's a better picture out here in the sun, how beautiful this is. It's just absolutely stunning and smells like sweet, rich, beautiful earth. That You don't want, ever want to put anything that stinks on your compost and if anything, I feel like it, it smells like walking in the woods, I guess. Walking in the woods or walking on a, next to a pond maybe, like the sand by, a, by an inland lake. <laughs> I guess coming from Michigan, that's the best thing I can compare it to. All right, so I'm gonna go get a drink and then we're gonna go out and we're gonna get our English butter peas. <laughs> That'll be fun. So I know everybody isn't as fortunate as I am right now, but I asked Todd to come and help me. <laughs> Can you carry that out? It's so heavy. It is heavy. It looks good. Good soil. Yes. I'm really excited about it. So I think it's going to be exactly what I need to plant my butter peas. So let's go do that. Before we get started on that though, I do want to point out, especially if you're new here and you caught me saying how I was giving all of the lettuce that had nearly bolted on me to the chickens. Um, I, what I did was I just cut it way, way back and the potatoes were falling in on it. Uh, it's just beyond hot, so it's bitter. What I'm going to try to do that I was successful at last year, don't know if it's gonna be successful this year, is try to keep it um, maintained and hopefully it'll grow back nice for the fall. So we'll see if I can't do that. If not, I'll just plant a new fall crop, but why not try it? Um, but would you look at my sweet potato row? It's totally booming with vines. Here's one sitting right next to me, just crazy. So probably one of the next videos you're gonna see is me coming out here and harvesting sweet potato vines while the sweet potato plants themselves are producing the tubers. They put off way more vines than you need and it can actually rob some of the energy from getting the nice big sweet potatoes that you want. So I'm gonna come out here and harvest some of those and try to keep this maintained a little bit because I am growing cucumbers in here too. And if I don't keep it maintained, I'm gonna lose, lose sight of my cucumbers. But where we're going next is right over here to my brassica bed. And um, I pulled out broccoli uh, probably a week, now, a week ago now, and we are going to amend that backside of that bed with the compost and get our butter peas planted. What I'm doing right now is just 
lo lo loosening up the soil, it gets compacted. And after rain, people stepping on it, and I'm not tilling it by any means, just lifting it up. And what that's gonna allow is, I'll come back through here, give it a fine rake, and when I put the compost on it, the compost will feed the soil better. The butter beans will have an easier time to root freely, and it's just something I do every single season. So, just an idea for you. Next thing I'm gonna do to prepare the soil is give it a good drenching, but not just with water. I'm gonna give it a good drenching of fish emulsion. Whoops. Give that a quick stir. One of the reasons I'm doing this, beyond putting all the beneficials into the soil um, from the fish emulsion, is drenching your soil before, especially before planting beans like this, is going to help them get a good start. We've had such dry conditions that our soil is just nearly dry as a bone. So just give them a good, good kick start. Okay, I have this row is about 25 square feet long, just really, I'm sure it's like 18 inches wide, but I'm just gonna use my square foot growing guide template just so I can have a straight line. That's really the only reason I'm using it today. Um, planting depth, these are from Haas Seed. So it is the White Dixie Butter Pea. And uh, 75 days to maturity, so I do need to get them in the ground now. And, they are um, a bush pea, I, from my understanding. And I think that they get rather a large bush pea. And I'll have to leave these to maturity, I believe, to harvest the beans uh, pods when they are um, dry. So I think what I'm gonna, only gonna do is, since I have 100 seeds per packet, and this is right at 25 square feet or 20 square feet, I'm gonna do like four four or five per square foot. So, and then what that'll leave me with is the other packet I think I'm gonna do where my first set of peas came out in front of the tomatoes, if you're familiar with my garden. So you might think I'm crazy doing this. Um, it's probably coming up at, what time is it? Oh, yep, it's 11 o'clock now doing this midday, but actually we're, we've got a storm rolling in around 12 or one o'clock today. So that's exactly why I'm trying to get everything planted before the rain comes. Um, and then everything, the garden just gets a nice good soaking. So I'll see what all I can get accomplished. What I at least have to do is get all the compost put down on the ground so it can work its way into the soil. I hope you guys are having fun because this is where it's fun for me. It started off rough with the harvesting of the compost, but this is the fun stuff. This is officially my first planting of Haas tool seeds. So I'm really excited about that. Whoops, we're gonna use our square foot growing guide. Get that out. Using the blue spots, stick those. Gonna go one inch deep. That's uh, the first little line on your stick is your one inch marker. So it's a pretty nice tool. And again, I'm just using this so, cause I am terrible at planting in straight rows. It's just gonna help me have a straight, straight row. Okay. Grow well, friends. My first time growing these too. If you guys have ever grown the Dixie butter pea, let me know. Um, and two, how you like to preserve them.
If I end up with leftover seeds, what I'll do is I'll come back and put one in the middle. Okay, I ended up getting five in all of them except this front seven. Um, so I do have an idea that if it gets really hot again on how to protect these as they come up from getting any kind of heat stress as young seedlings, but it is getting darker and darker right now. So I need to rush and get my carrot bed um, prepped with the compost. I doubt I'll have time to get it planted today, but I'll at least show you that. It's a bit unique, um, a bit different of a bed. So let's head back there and take a look. Woo, I gotta rush, it is thundering, thundering. So this is the section right here that I was talking about. And it, guys, this will be my very first time ever. I'm super nervous about it, but not nervous in a scary way. Like I just have doubts whether it's gonna work. I've never planted carrots in a soil bed, like an earth bed before. I always uh, plant my carrots in my uh, raised beds. So as you can see, this is very much organic matter. Tons of straw and everything. Um, so it's never, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's never been properly like sifted or filtered. So I'm thinking like there's clumps of just dirt. So I'm nervous that whether or not it's going to be good growing conditions for my carrots, but I'm going to get this raked out real good. And then hopefully before the rain really hits, get this compost put on. So this compost will make excellent conditions for planting my carrots. Because you don't have to plant carrots too deeply and you don't want a crust to form on top of your soil that they can't come out. So you do want a really good, fine growing medium for your carrots. The one time the weatherman is right when I want to film a video, it is getting really dark out there. I'm going to show you guys off for a second, just in case, and uh, maybe hide you under a sunflower. Okay, I got just a little bit left, so I'm going to go around and where I pulled all the carrots out of my raised beds, just amend what I can with what I have left. But guys, I'll bring you back in my next video out here in the garden. We'll definitely be planting the rest of the butter beans or butter peas, getting the carrots in, and I'll show you what I came up with with respect to a shade solution. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to come out before the next one, but I got to head in. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if I didn't say, I took a personal day off work today because I'm getting behind on homestead stuff. So I'm going to head in get showered up and cleaned up and I've got a lot of canning to do. So that'll give me something to do while it rains outside. Thanks guys for coming with me, getting some of her first fall crops in. It feels great. And hopefully it inspires you that if you're not making your own compost and you have an enclosed chicken run, it's a phenomenal way to do it. I could definitely get more than I am right now if I was putting constant input in there, but um, I do what I can with what I have. Um, I'm not going out and supplementing it with external resources. So, you hear that thunder? Oops. I'm gonna go in, talk to you guys later. You see that dark sky back there? But look what I just grabbed. That's a really nice onion. And uh, the, just start checking them. If you guys are following me on my onion growing um, recommendations, start checking them. And if you see that the necks are super soft, go ahead and pull them, especially now before rain. I don't want this to rot in the ground. So they're just starting random ones here and there. This is one of the white sterlings, a little on the smaller side, but an excellent onion. So, and I need green onions for a recipe I'm making. So perfect.